So YouTube finally sent me something, and when I reached out on Discord to ask what I should do with it, the answer was to use my projects to try to open it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, if you remember, I pumped up my car tire with just water pressure from my garden hose, and I'm not really sure how to use those to open up a cardboard box, but I've got my rain generator here that we're gonna to connect to the water supply and see if we can get enough voltage to start spinning this little DC motor. I've put a little uh, slitting saw on here and we'll see if it at least has something to cut through the tape. But I don't know, this, this is not a lot of wattage. If you remember, it was maybe just one watt uh, that we were getting out of the rain gutter. So we'll see with a garden hose if we can do enough to even cut the tape for this box. All right, here goes. Whoa, that thing is smoking. All right, let's get some power. I gotta hold that while I'm plugging this in. Oh, neat. Hmm, maybe we need a little more power here, a little more flow. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> water line busted off of here. I gave it way too much. Boy, it was going for a second. All right, let's put that back on. Let's try this again. I don't want to give it so much. It's going to blow the hose off of there again. Come on. Boy, it's all or nothing with this thing. All right, here goes <laughs> before it comes off of there. Let's try cutting. Oh, it's bogging it down. I can just get in there. But you see, it stops the thing anytime I start cutting it. So I got through one piece of tape, but uh, let's go try something with a little bit more power. Now, normally this 50 watt solar panel would be plenty of power to run this tiny little motor, but we're running out of sunlight, so I don't know if this thing is gonna work. And that's the nature of solar. You don't get to choose when the sun is up. So here we go, let's see if this thing can get enough to be able to open the box. Oh, it's not moving. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> it's spinning. Let's give it a shot. Ah, it's not even enough to cut the tape. Come on, let's give it a shot on this one. It just breaks, it can't even do it. <laughs> if I'd gotten this an hour ago, it would rip through it no problem. But we're gonna have to try something else. Now a number of people have asked, why don't just mount a wind turbine on my roof? And honestly, rooftops are not a great location for wind power. One reason is because the top of a building is another large flat surface just like the ground we're trying to get away from, which slows the wind speed. Plus, I'm surrounded by tall trees, which slow things down even more. So as you can see, a turbine on my roof is never gonna generate any meaningful power. As longtime viewers of my channel know, one sure way to get wind on demand is to mount a custom carbon fiber wind turbine on the front of my Bronco. But there's one small problem. I designed it to function at highway speeds and there's just no way I'll be able to drive fast enough in the cul-de-sac to get it to work. Even if I could, how am I going to drive and open the package at the same time? Well, if the wind, sun, and rain aren't gonna cooperate, I know a way to power our generator that will work any day, any time, rain or shine. It just needs strong enough mounting hardware so the power doesn't get away from me. When my son and I tested the wind turbine, we maxed out at... Two kilowatts! <laughs> Two <kilowatts! laughs> Woo! But this engine is capable of delivering almost double the 7200 watts our generator can produce. That's enough power to run nearly any tool in my shop. All right, let's let her rip. <laughs> I didn't tighten that down. <laughs> oh. Let's try this again. All right, 
Will the spindle spin? Maybe I need to rev it up a little bit. My uh, box over here, my converter's making some noise. I'll go rev up the engine. Now, I don't know if you could hear that on the mill or not, but it was starting to have some issues. And the reason was because this generator isn't turning fast enough. So right now on the oscilloscope, we've got displayed the household electric coming in at 60 hertz. So it's the voltage is bobbing up and down 60 times a second from positive 110 to minus 110. All the electronics in your home are looking for that, either a 50 or a 60 hertz signal. And the generator was going so slow that we weren't getting that full 60 hertz and I had to come out and speed the thing up. But let's hook this up to the generator so we can see that output. Right now we've got the signal from the generator superimposed over the top of the signal from the wall. So we can see they're not lined up at all. And this is why you can't just take your generator and hook it up into the wall because you'll be competing with the voltages coming from the power station in your neighborhood. So let's speed this thing up and watch it change. So this is exactly what we would need to power our home, but we still can't have it compete with the voltage that's coming in from the power station. There we go. <laughs> Just had to go fast enough. Did we do it? All right, is the box open? Maybe we should take it out of the vise. <laughs> Letter from YouTube, 100,000 subscribers. Ah, maybe I shouldn't throw that where the grease is. And there is the play button. Not bad. <laughs> what is this? Package with great care by Rick. Thanks, Rick. Okay, so why didn't I just use a regular 220 generator? Well, because the challenge was to use one of the projects that made this channel what it is to open the box. And yeah, I cheated a little bit, but now we've got a 13 kilowatt power source that we can use for all kinds of stuff, not to mention driving a generator anywhere from 30 to 70 hertz, which opens up some possibilities. Plus, we can mount the thing to the front or the back of the Bronco and take it to remote places, maybe even charge a stranded electric car. Now, why am I opening a 100,000 subscriber play button when the channel has almost half a million subscribers? Because I never got an email from YouTube that this thing was available. So more than a year later, I reached out and was able to hook the thing up. Now, this channel has grown lightning fast. And I can't say why. All I can say is that some of the larger channels that I look up to took years to get to this point where Quint Bills did it in only 10 months. What I can say is that I literally couldn't have done this without you. So thank you very much. Now, if you want to nerd out on oscilloscopes and all the stuff that I didn't cover, check out the video on Build 2. It's got a part in there where I connect a two to one belt on the engine and generator to see what that does, which was kind of cool. But that's all for now. Thank you so much again. I'll see you in the next video.